An experimental coronavirus vaccine being developed here in the U.S. is showing promise. The first round of human tests found the vaccine triggered an immune response to all of the volunteers who received it. 45 of them rolled up their sleeves for this vaccine back in March. Researchers say they had only mild side effects, fatigue, chills, some muscle pain, kind of the same thing you see that you get when you have a flu vaccine. So the next step is much bigger, a 30,000 person study to prove the shots are really strong enough to protect against the coronavirus. And that begins later this month. So joining us now to talk about this news, epidemiologist Dr. Jonathan Cantor. And thank you for talking with us today. So this is the first vaccine showing promising results. What was the reaction that has researchers so optimistic? Well, the really exciting thing here is that, you know, we elicited an immune response in everybody who received the vaccine. And, you know, it sounds like this is sort of an obvious thing, but this is really that necessary first step. The question is, can you get those antibodies that we need, that we need to fight the coronavirus from giving the vaccine? And the answer was overwhelmingly yes. We also saw a dose response relationship. And what that means is that those who got the lower dose vaccine created less antibodies and those that got the higher dose created more antibodies. That also bolsters this idea that the vaccine is working. All right. So there has been some concern, though, that the antibodies associated with COVID-19, just like other coronaviruses, don't stay in the body very long. So how could this affect the efficacy of this vaccine? Right. So one of the concerns is that, you know, with the coronavirus, how long are you going to get the durability of the response? Right. So you don't want to get the vaccine every month. That's not really going to be tenable, although it sure beats the heck out of getting coronavirus. So what we're going to have to do is really investigate closely to see how long do those antibody levels last? There have been some reports in the literature of people getting coronavirus after they've been infected before, but those are very rare. And we don't know if those are just because maybe the testing was off one of the two times that they were tested. So having this vaccine data is actually going to help because we can longitudinally study those who have elicited, where we have elicited an antibody response and see how long does that antibody response last as well. You know, when you talk to just the general public, there are a lot of people that say, hey, I am not going to take a first of its kind vaccine. So are there any dangers when considering whether or not you take it when this ultimately does become available? Right. So there are always risks with everything. And there's always going to be a risk benefit trade off that you have to consider with any treatment. Uh, the thing that we can do is we can look back at the past century of vaccine development. And for the most part, the risk benefit ratio is overwhelmingly in favor of the benefit. So in general, yes, there are going to be rare risks associated with vaccines, but the benefits are going to be so much greater that it definitely makes sense to do, you know, to take a vaccine. You know, here, of course, the thing to keep in mind is that unless you're in a clinical trial, you're not going to be among the first. As you mentioned, there are 30,000 people participating in this next trial. So no American is going to be offered this vaccine unless it's been tested in over 30,000 people beforehand. So we're going to be pretty able to say, you know, are people having even a rare reaction to make sure that it's as safe and effective as possible before it's rolled out for the American public? Yeah, when you talk about that risk versus benefit, especially positive for people who are vulnerable. So this is the first one tested, but there are many others in the works. Talk about the process as far as who could get there first, and then could there be other vaccines that you could take as well? Right. So, you know, one of the things here that's interesting is that we don't have a single race for a vaccine, right? This isn't like the Manhattan Project in World War II, where everybody kind of got together in Los Alamos and developed the bomb. You know, here we've got companies all over the world that are taking very different approaches. The vaccine that we have this positive news on, which is Moderna's vaccine, this is an mRNA vaccine. The other important thing here is that this is the first time an mRNA vaccine has really been shown to have this promise. There are no mRNA vaccines that are really in production right now. So that's kind of interesting and exciting because it bodes well for future development in case of future pandemics. And then there are a lot of other companies, uh, namely there's one at the University of Oxford, which has really been showing a lot of promise, which is sort of more of a traditional uh, vaccine development route. They had a bit of a head start because they were already working on coronavirus vaccines. But to get that regulatory approval, the FDA is going to require that people do, that the companies do phase three trials in very large numbers of people as we're seeing. And the key thing they want to demonstrate there is both 
safety and effectiveness. So they want to make sure that are the people who are getting this vaccine less likely to get coronavirus, not just creating antibodies, but are they less likely to actually get the disease? Because that's the primary endpoint you're interested in, not just making antibodies, but making sure that you don't get infected. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately the bottom line. Dr. Cantor, thank you so much for that insight today. And we'll be back after the break. 